Who did henchmen want to be? Chris Lighty. Who was we down with? Beef is inherited. Stop playing. Yes, Jimmy Henchman is presently serving two life sentences in Brooklyn Federal Court. His charges include drug trafficking and being part of a murder-for-hire scheme. It is no secret that the streets have always had ties to the rap industry. But Jimmy Henchman stands out as one of the scariest individuals to step into the industry. With some of the deadliest beefs in the game. Well, don't give me no pass, man. I don't, I don't deserve passes. I be, I'm a f up. Man. You should do something to me. You understand what I'm saying? You gonna come shoot me, kill me. If you're not gonna kill me, stop shooting me. Don't come for me unless you're gonna come and get me. Without any apparent retaliation, showcases his cunning and influence even within law enforcement. In this video, we'll explore how he became arguably the most feared man in the rap business, his deadly feuds with artists, and eventually, his downfall. Let's dive into it. Born James J. Rosemond, on 5th of February 1965 in Harlem, New York, he was raised in Flatbush, alongside his four siblings. Growing up must have been tough for him and his siblings considering the fact that his mother was left alone to fend for the family. This is because his parents divorced when he was just a boy. During his early years, he associated himself with a group known as the Untouchables. Jimmy aspired to carve out a reputation for himself in the streets, accumulating two gun charges by the age of 16. Eventually, he dropped out of school and spent a year on Rikers Island. He found himself back in legal trouble shortly after returning home. This time, he faced charges related to another shooting, while he made bail on the gun charge. A few months later, he was entangled in a homicide case. Pleading guilty to the gun charge allowed him to get the murder case dismissed, but he still received a 5-10 to 10 year sentence. During his time in prison, Jimmy connected with Richard Moore, a Black Panther leader who persuaded him to pursue education. Henchman heeded this advice, and by the time of his release in 1988, he had earned an associate's degree, equipped to approach the streets with a more informed perspective. After spending three years in the crack game, his business was booming. Part of the reasons contributing to his success is he acted as an informant for the New York Police Department. For that, he even had some inside men in the police. And the other reason was, well, he was a strong arm, a bully, and an enforcer in the streets. He would play dirty in some of his trades. But it wasn't long until he soon discovered he could make more money in the music industry compared to drug dealing. He decided to make the transition. This was around the time of Tupac's rise as one of the hottest rappers globally. Jimmy and Haitian Jack teamed up to create a management company called How Can I Be Down, representing artists for labels. Haitian Jack, well connected in the luxury living scene, introduced Tupac to celebrities like Madonna. Despite rumors of warnings from Biggie about getting involved with Jack, Tupac disregarded the advice. While Biggie and Tupac initially had a close friendship, Things changed when Haitian Jack and Jimmy Henchman entered the picture. Tupac met Henchman through Haitian Jack. Although Pac wasn't interested in being managed by him, brushing him off. Henchman then allegedly offered him $7,000 to collaborate on a track with his artist Lil Xion. Struggling with financial issues during the sexual abuse case, Tupac needed the money, so he agreed to meet at Quad Studios in Times Square. Accompanied by his friend Stretch and a few others, Tupac arrived at the studio where Puffy and Biggie were also present. Unfortunately, before meeting with them, three assailants attacked Tupac in the elevator lobby, robbing and shooting him. I'm a street dude right. too, right. you know what Absolutely. I'm saying? Absolutely. And that's how I would deal with Jack, you dig? Right. I was not gonna just blow him off and just talk crazy about him behind his back. Right. Blaming Puffy, Biggie, Henchman, and Jack for the setup, Tupac's accusations fueled the beef between him and Biggie escalating into the infamous East Coast-West Coast War that ultimately led to their tragic deaths. In the track Against All Odds, Tupac publicly sent shots at Henchman for his involvement in the shooting. And did I mention, promise to pay back to me Henchman? In due time, I know you bitch niggas is listening, the world is mine. Set me up. Henchman consistently denied any connection, but in 2011, his associate Dexter Isaac claimed that Jimmy Henchman paid him to rob Tupac. Isaac, who has known henchmen since their teenage years, is currently serving a life sentence for other crimes. Isaac also said that henchmen gave him $2,500 to carry out the robbery, allowing him to keep all the stolen jewelry except one ring. 
henchman wanted to retain the larger of the two diamond rings to gift it to his then-girlfriend, Cynthia Reed. Isaac mentioned that Stretch, Tupac's homie, assisted in the robbery, and henchman rewarded him with a quarter brick of cocaine. Unfortunately, Stretch was murdered a year later, and Tupac took shots at him in Against All Odds. And that nigga that was down for me, rest the day. Switch sides, guess his new friends, one of them day. Probably be murdered for the shit that I Jimmy was never charged in connection with the Quad Studio shooting. However, he later found himself embroiled in an even more intense conflict when henchmen went to war against 50 Cent and G-Unit. Henchman at the time had already made a name for himself in New York with strong ties to 50 Cent's mentor, Kenneth Supreme McGriff. Initially, he didn't have issues with 50 Cent. However, tensions arose when 50 Cent achieved massive success with his Get Rich or Die Tryin' album in 2003. As 50 Cent rose to fame, Dr. Dre signed another rapper, The Game. Eventually, Dre proposed adding The Game to G-Unit, and 50 Cent, wanting to expand his influence to the West Coast, agreed. The Game's manager at the time was Jimmy Henchman. Jealousy and resentment brewed in Henchman, especially witnessing 50 Cent's success in the months leading up to The Game's debut album. In a documentary, 50 Cent suggests that Henchman may have influenced The Game advising him that beefing with 50 Cent would make him bigger than 50 Cent. But I ain't no motherfucking punk, and I ain't nobody soldier, and I don't follow suit like that, Jay Nash. Listen, listen, 50 Cent is fuck, fuck, 50 Cent This laid the groundwork for a bitter and dangerous rivalry. Henchman revealed in an interview that the plan was for the game to surpass 50 Cent and become bigger than him. Another reason for Jimmy's dislike of 50 was 50 Cent's close friendship with music executive Chris Lighty. Tony Yayo mentioned in an interview with DJ Vlad that Jimmy harbored intense jealousy towards Chris Lighty. Who wanted to be like Chris Lighty? Jimmy Henchman? Yeah. What did that. Jimmy Henchman do? You, you said Move that. on the same block, Chris Lighty. Who did Henchman want to be? Chris Lighty. Who was we down with? Beef is inherited. And 50 Cent being Lighty's friend added to Jimmy's resentment. The beef between The Game and 50 Cent officially started in February 2005, with The Game launching the GU Not campaign at Summer Jam 2005. The feud between 50 Cent, G Unit, and Jimmy Henchman reached a boiling point in 2005 and 2006. Following the game's initiation of the GU Not campaign, 50 Cent responded on the Back to Business mixtape in October 2005. In the track Emotional, 50 Cent not only expressed his sentiments about the campaign, but also insinuated Jimmy Henchman's role in orchestrating the game's actions. The conflict escalated as Jimmy Henchman allegedly continued to fuel the game's animosity toward 50 Cent. Throughout 2005 and 2006, the game released multiple diss tracks targeting 50 Cent. In 2006, 50 Cent finally retaliated with the song, I'm Not Rich, I'm Still Lying, taking aim not only at the game but also at Jimmy Henchman. The situation took a dark turn in March 2007, during an altercation involving Tony Yayo, Lodi Mack, and Jimmy Henchman's son. Yayo and Mack confronted Jimmy Henchman's 14-year-old son after they saw him enter the building wanting to go and see his father, resulting in a physical altercation where Yayo slapped the teenager and Lodi Mack held him at gunpoint. Henchman's son told his father about the incident when got in. Lodi Mack, a part of the confrontation, later took responsibility for Yayo saying he slapped the kid and was sentenced to two years in prison. However, shortly after his release, Lodi Mack was fatally shot in New York, allegedly in response to a hit ordered by Jimmy Henchman. Jimmy's attempts on the lives of 50 Cent and Tony Yayo included a planned shooting at 50 Cent's bulletproof van and a drive-by shooting at Yayo's mom's house. The final attempt involved shooting at Tony Yayo's Bentley, but Yayo was fortunate to be inside a bulletproof van next to his Bentley at the time, preventing any harm. You know, my issue was really more with Jimmy Henchman. I left the pile around the corner. Luckily, I was in my bulletproof truck behind the Bentley. After all the drama, 50 Cent wanted to get back at Jimmy Henchman's crew in Atlanta. He found where they lived and made threatening phone calls. He even left a dead rat at one of their doors, which he talks about in the song, Get the Message. I left a message by your door, you got a 44. Get the message, come out, get the message. Tell my 
In June 2010, Jimmy Henchman got into legal trouble. He was arrested for dealing cocaine, money laundering, and trying to tamper with witnesses. His trial was set for May 2012, but in June 2012, he got hit with more charges linked to Lodi Mac's death. They accused him of plotting a murder and trying to make it happen. Jimmy tried to cut a deal by giving info on others to get a lighter punishment. On May 22, 2012, 50 Cent dropped a mixtape called The Lost Tape. In one track, Complicated, 50 Cent dissed Jimmy Henchman, talking about his trial and suggesting he is cooperating with the cops to get a better deal. It seems like people thought of Henchman as a rat for allegedly snitching to save himself. Finally, on November 29, 2017, Jimmy Henchman was found guilty. 50 Cent continued mocking him on Instagram until Jimmy recorded his reaction to getting two life sentences. To the game, I want to apologize to you for what I allowed to happen to me. Kill Luel Fletcher. You know, one of the things that I did ask... As it stands, Jimmy Henchman is now serving life behind bars, while 50 Cent has lived to share the story. It seems pretty clear who came out on top in this war. Concerning his family, Jimmy Henchman's wife is Cynthia Reed from Staten Island. The exact timeline of when they started dating or got married is not known. They share a son named James Roseman Jr. and a daughter. What do you guys think about Henchman? Feel free to comment down below and also who you'd like us to feature next.